All right, I'm here with the 2024 AGT Industrial LRT23 Chinese Mini Skid Steer. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to walk through how to change the oil. This one has around three hours on it. And some of you may think that that's a little bit too soon to do an oil change. But in my opinion, this is a brand new engine and three hours of operation. It's, it's done an incredible amount of RPMs. And if it's going to produce some metal flakes that get introduced into the oil system, it's probably already done it. And this has the original oil that was in there, and I just don't really trust it. So it doesn't cost that much to do an oil change, and it's actually quite easy on this machine. So here are some of the supplies you're definitely going to need. Uh, the oil plug is a 12 millimeter. So you're either going to need a 12 millimeter ratchet with a four to six inch extension, uh, or you could probably just use a 12 millimeter wrench uh, to get that plug off. Another useful tool that you might uh, use is uh, some 18 inch tubing. And what this does is whenever you undo that oil plug, oil goes everywhere. I know that because I didn't have anything like this whenever I did my first oil change and it gets uh, underneath these mounts, it gets underneath the fuel tank, it goes all over the place. And on top of that, another thing that I'm doing with this particular oil change, and you can't see it, but I've actually driven the mini skid on top of uh, a two by four on this side and then a one by on this side. This is just barely tilted just enough where the oil is gonna to wanna to go this direction and that's the direction I want it to go. Uh, but this is gonna help me get it into the pan, which leads me to the other thing you need. You need a drain pan. Uh, inside this drain pan, I have a, uh, a narrow uh, funnel and I also have uh, this tubing that I can attach to the funnel. Uh, I'm gonna clean that out, but. But what this is used for is it's very helpful uh, to go through this access hole uh, with that funnel uh, to be able to get that oil into the engine without it going all over the place. All right, of course, rags, gloves, oil filter. As far as the oil recommendation, I'm going to use 10W30. And the reason I'm going to use 10W30 is that's what they recommend uh, for this particular engine for my climate. I have all four seasons. Really, really hot in the summer, and it gets... Pretty cold in the winter, so 1030 is kind of that middle ground. Okay, with that said, there is a little project I've got to do. Um, two things, actually, I need to do before I start taking things off. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crank the engine. I'm going to let this thing run for about 10 minutes, just, as a, just at an idle while it's sitting here. And the purpose of that is to get that engine oil warm, and it's also going to circulate that engine oil through that system. And if there is any metal flake in it, it's going to start to become agitated and suspended within the oil. That's the idea anyway. And that way when you drain it, it drains as much of that as possible. But the other project I've got to do is I'm going to put a little plastic attachment that'll hopefully fit inside that oil drain port uh, on the end of this tube. So I'm going to do that right now. All right, I've let the engine warm up. And what I'm going to do now is a little project where I'm trying to make a, a drain tube. And so the idea behind this is this is three eighths vinyl and this is actually a put it up close to the camera and show you this is actually a drywall anchor a, a rather large one though uh, but it came with a tv mount but i'm pretty sure that this will fit in there it'll just take a little bit of modification and that's what i'm going to do right here All right, so you're looking at the view from pretty much where the muffler is uh, towards the old drain plug. You can see the old drain plug right there. And one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to feed in this 3 8 tube that hopefully is going to help me drain this where it's clean. I want to position this thing and just, just let it rest off here to the side. Hopefully it'll stay there. All right, I do have my drain pan underneath there, and you can see, uh, of course, this masking tape is not factory. I put that on there, kind of like shingles, uh, just in case the tube doesn't work. I actually switched over to a 12 millimeter deep socket. It just fits a little better. That six inch extension was just a little bit too, 
too long. All right, and once you get the threads broken, we can probably take it out by hand from this point. Dropped it. Dropped it again. Oh no. <laughs> well, it definitely can't work if I keep dropping it. Oh, look at that. All right, now that that tube is on there, I'm going to uh, take off the oil filler cap. That's going to allow some air to get in there. It'll drain a little faster. Now, the thing with this is I just got to hold it on there. I can't really let go. It's not being threaded on there. It's simply just, just a tapered neck. But it seems to be working. I did make a mess, though. Look at that. That's what I mean. It, it gets everywhere. Even though I have this uh, on just a little bit of a pitch where it's angled uh, toward the port side. Look at that. A little bit of air in moving there's still oil that's going to be getting underneath the, the fuel tank oh well all right i'm removing my little drain port tube that i made we're done with that i don't know how well it worked there's still oil everywhere um still draining just a little bit um <laughs> and i was hoping that this tape would actually make the oil you know run down the side but it doesn't look like it worked that way i think it went in a forward direction, actually. Can't see how bad it is up there, but maybe it helped a little. Okay, so oil filter removal, we have ran into a problem. Hopefully you can see this. Here's the oil filter. That's the original oil filter that comes with it. As I'm trying to remove this oil filter and turn it counterclockwise, this casing that it's mounted to is also turning. Those things are trying to come off together. And as I'm looking at this, uh, there's actually a line on the back side of this. You can't see it because there's uh, some components blocking it. There's a line on the back side that runs here and then up to this oil cooler. And so my thought is, uh, it looks like I can jam something between the lines that are on the back side of this and the upper portion of the engine to block this from turning. And if I can do that successfully, I should be able to remove the oil filter at that point. Okay, we're at the back of the machine now, and I want to try to give you a different view of what I'm talking about. Uh, so we're, let's see what the best angle is. Uh, so there's the oil cooler that I'm referring to, and see that line right there that kind of curls in towards the engine? But this curved line, it ends up connecting into that casing, the one that's turning with the oil filter. Essentially what I'm going to do is try to create some sort of a wedge uh, between the top of the block and the top of that line where it connects in, the solid portion, uh, to keep that from turning. Because uh, I noticed that this hose is actually moving up to as I turn that oil filter. So we'll see how that works. Okay, remember that time I said it was going to be easy? Well, it, it wasn't easy at all, actually. Uh, so what I did was I ended up having to use an oil filter wrench, which, of course, it was turning that casing. So I ended up uh, putting a wedge in uh, between where uh, the, the fittings attach coming from that oil cooler, going to that, that particular casing that was spinning with the oil filter. So I used that uh, in addition to uh, this, this oil filter wrench, and I wrapped this non-skid material around that oil filter just to, to keep that oil filter wrench from spinning, believe it or not. But what's worrying me I've actually spun it about halfway around. It's starting to break free, but there's a little bit of a gap now between the casing and the oil filter, and it's still very, very stiff, which is unusual, and that kind of has me worried a little bit. So 
All right, we're going to see what happens as I keep going. Okay, so I just now got another quarter turned on it, and, and I felt it break free. It's not stiff anymore. This is crazy. There we go. That is unreal. Okay. Why on earth does a brand new engine with only three hours on it uh, is the oil filter seized up? So <clears throat> either Hercules put this thing on, uh, maybe even with some tools, I don't know, uh, or maybe they didn't uh, lube this, this outer seal right here with oil to make it easier. I don't know. But that is nuts. I have never seen an oil filter on a brand new engine that was that hard to, to remove. But the good news is, I don't believe any damage occurred. All right, so what I've got here is I have the uh, old oil filter, and then here's the new oil filter that I believe is the one that's going to fit. Just by size comparison, height-wise, you know, they're pretty much equivalent. Um, it appears that the seals are going to be close to the same. I'm just going to do a quick little made up here. And you can see that, that that new one, the replacement one, is just a little bit a little bit skinnier. Uh, but I believe the seals are going to contact in the same places. So the model for this, uh, this is a, I got a Fram drive. And what's important is these last four digits, 4967. Uh, that is the fitment. Uh, the first two co letter codes, that's, that's kind of the model of the oil filter. But the fitment is the 4967. All right, so what I'm going to do, and always do this whenever you're about to put on a filter, and I'm just going to use this right here, a um, little bit of that oil, and just a really thin coat with your fingertip. All right, and now we're going to put it on. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this thing on hand tight. I'm not going to crank it down uh, because I'm probably going to be the one changing the oil again one day. And even if I were to sell this, I don't want anybody else to have to deal with the issue that I just now did. I'm going to run it like this. I'll do several inspections while I'm running it to see if there's any leaks, any problems. If there is, I will crank it down some more. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to make sure this is hand tight and move on. I got a tube uh, routed through the side and it goes down into the oil filler port. Uh, and originally I told you that I went through this hole right here, but um, my mistake. I'm incorrect. I'm going to show you which one I went through. I've got that tube hooked to this funnel and I'm actually going through um, this top hole where the hydraulic line, this very top hydraulic line. Uh, that is the best way to get it in there. And now what I'm going to do is start filling. Okay, so we got the oil topped off, oil lids on, uh, drain plug is tight, oil filter's on. Now comes the fun part, we gotta clean up. But that's how you change the oil on your mini skid steer. Uh, pretty straightforward, unless you have a problem with the oil filter.